Smick standing here with Coach Gokhead after an amazing map number one from Leviathan. Really quick for you, we noticed that there was a switch made before on Icebox. Icebox was on Reyna, and now we see him back on that jet. And we see why he had an amazing ace. But tell us about some of the reasoning as to why you made that change. Uh, honestly, we think both Reyna and Jet work really good, but uh, it's nice to mix it up. Jet allows you to get a bit more operator, which obviously on Aspas is uh, insane. So it was also him feeling it. Uh, we can play with both, and he was feeling like Jet, so we just went for Jet because it's a little nice uh, switch up and it works good. He was feeling like Jet and he got us that wonderful ace. Best of luck on map number two. Thank you. So it seems like uh, Aspas just goes out there and says, I think I want to play this one this time around. And they did just that. And then he drops a 30 bomb. That's crazy, bro. I mean, <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. That's to amazing. Be honest. Because, yeah. like, one of the things that they're missing when they're playing, like, the Reina, for example, is the ability to have that verticality and especially mm -hmm. fighting aggressively over an A main, B main on defense. Uh, so I actually really like that read where they can get a little bit more flexible map to map. I also love how differently you, you see him play sometimes depending on the role. I think he's really good at, like, taking the right fights depending on his agent. He's a top-level player yeah. no matter what he's playing. And giving Absolutely. a star like that flexibility is awesome. Let's not act like switching to, from Reyna to Jet is some sort what of revolutionary pivot. thing. Yeah, last he's I, one last of the I heard it was, a, it was a real in crazy pick. <laughs> <laughs> he was farming, though, and, and all of Leviathan was, to be honest. They, they Right out the gate, they won that pistol, and if, since that moment, you kind of, other than the time they got code you kind of saw them working all sorts of corners of the map and it was working really well 100 percent. i think tex had uh, that big ground he was able to walk all the way up into yeah. a main they played another round leaving king inserted down uh uh by jail yeah. they also did a lot of mid work not just with one player late in a round but also three players walking in a tube clearing it out freezing the round and all if you're c9 you're just wondering like, where can they be creeping up once our killjoy utility starts to fall down level really good at using time and sort of freezing and hiding information to make C9 worried. Yeah, and the way that they were, that uh, Osfos was playing around the harbor was really reminiscent of him on Loud, right? They did a great job, I think, of yeah. kind of setting comms darts in the right position around that harbor utility to set Osfos up to take some really good opening fights throughout this one. And it was the same deal on the retakes, for the most part, looking real clean in the second half. I think the synergy looking at, at really a higher level than what we saw in kickoff already. Yeah, it's actually uh, quite impressive. I mean, something that uh, Rivington Vansilli pointed out that I just want to give, uh, you know, shine a little bit more of a light on text only person with more first kills uh, than Aspas in the server, right? So really showing his, his impact. His lurks were going crazy. Yeah, his lurks game, were nuts. Honestly. He was really he was really putting that work, and it does feel like this team is starting to gel together. But now as we take a look at the other side of the field, let's see what's going on with the coach of C9s. We have Smick standing by. Smick standing here with Coach Emmy ahead of Sunset. Coach Emmy, obviously Cloud9 has made some roster changes with the addition of Moose and Rooney. How has practice been going with them and what do you think it is that those two bring to the team? Yeah, practice has been going great to be honest. Um, we're actually frying everyone. But I think when we got into here we're just playing not to lose. But they've been great additions. They've been, been comms which the other people didn't and they're very proactive. They just didn't show in that first game. Well, hopefully we're able to see some of that better on map number two for now. Thank you very much for taking the time and best of luck on Sunset. Thank you. Coach Jimmy noted there the aggression that we were seeing from Leviathan, and it did genuinely feel like, guys, and Paul, I mean, you noted it really early in the game. Like, it just felt as if Leviathan did whatever they wanted. They they got a uh, spike down, they just pushed forward. Even when it was a detriment to them, they still did it. It's very clear this team is trying to just aim for that style, that aggressive play style because yeah. of the weapons they have. We also, I, I mean, the Viper Harbor works in tandem with that That's idea true. In, in general, too. And I think the uh, uh, tools on the other side, Cloud9, uh, don't allow them to really get a little bit more initiative. You saw so many times where Leviathan on attack was pushing forward into the B side. As soon as Cloud9 put that wall down, they're done. They can't go forward anymore. Like They didn't have any chances to push forward. And I think that's because of the comp, to be honest. I also yeah. think in the first half, we saw a lot of players from Cloud9 honestly taking risks. I think of the round that, that Moose is like sitting in tube and gets picked off from that direction. There's a lot of moments where solo anchors, individual players, get picked off by a Leviathan that was doing a great job of working the map there. And we have this debut from these two players, one returning, one new to this tier one stage and honestly I felt pretty good about some of the stuff we saw from Moose.
I, I thought that, like, it, it was weird. Outside I thought, of the moments where, you know, no, the, the, the shots There, there were some whiffs in there the first There were some whiffs, yeah. okay. We it, moved it was definitely like I, like, I know Moose is a sick player. Of course. And then just every time he's the last one alive, it's like, oh, no, he's just not going to be able to hit also, his shots. Also, let's not forget, You're this is his first time playing in a yeah. VCT America stage. So it's also yeah. nerves kind of play a little bit of a role into this, this as well. I think the last big LAN he played was, like, the one match at LCQ 2021 before the LAN got canceled. Throwback. I remember that one. And, and the thing too, Rooney, I mean, the stats didn't show like he had a great performance, but there was moments where he had that impact that you remember from last year's Cloud9 with the Sheriffs. Multiple rounds, yeah. he was still having that first, that, that still one kill off. when he, when you just needed one person to get a gun and then all of a sudden that catapults. That sort of thing is what Rooney brings and he delivered a little bit, but not overall. I think yeah. both of them kind of had weak debuts. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I feel like in general, that, that game was kind of inflated in the round count because a couple of goes because of winning that pistol on the second half. Yeah. I think the scoreline makes it look way closer than it was. Like, that was a blowout for Olivia Ton. They were in control yeah. of that one throughout. They were dominating in all the rifle rounds, and a lot of these Cloud9 players just weren't hitting the same way that the squad was for Lev, especially when it came down to that synergy, right? Like, so many moments where Cloud9 is trying to flood onto a site together, just not setting up to trade each other out in the same way that Lev was. Yeah, well, now we take a look and see where we're going to be going for Map 2 Sunset here. Of course, you know, I think that there are a lot of ideas. We've seen tons of ideas implemented in Madrid, right? Some great, some not so great. He's back. Dude, he's, he's lounging we again. We saw C9 implementing some ideas sure during too. kickoff. Like, they were playing double duels with Raze Yoru oh, yeah. on this map. They weren't playing a sensual like yeah. memories. It was wild. I deleted that from my mind bank. Yeah, so, memories are you. bad. No, memories. it's bad. <laughs> They're horror nightmares, actually. Yeah. Like, giving its energy was very frustrating to yeah. watch. So we get that again here, right? No, uh, no, but like also, I think it is a little bit to do with like the the changes they've made because are we putting most uh, moose on smokes? No, I'd much rather see him on the cipher, right? Like on his bread and butter, especially on a map like Sunset. Uh, I want to see him back on that. Also, I wonder how much time they've actually had with Rooney and Moose, right, in the lineup. Like, is it Madrid when it started? Like, when when did they actually make the changes? When were they actually able to start practice with these two guys? Uh, because I think what we saw in Icebox was very comfortable type of choices, right? Kind of scared choices in my in. You, you might say because it's I mean, what Coach Jimmy said play to lose not to win yeah I, well, I mean, the comp, the comp the, sense is what I'm kind of talking about. I don't know that's I fair, think that fair. comp is fine right I think it, I think it's, it's a so tough outdated. match against the Harbor Viper but I, I think that comp think is so good to be fair it's, it's good but also when you're talking about Cloud9 who was playing like deadlock and sort of that stuff and sure. the team that's playing Yoru constantly like I mean it, I would say that you like I'm not saying to go back towards that stuff but like that's a team that wants to be creative and then all of a sudden you're going to this it's like a team who had an idea identity was taking risks versus the team that's exactly. going to the old yeah. default Yes, stuff. and this is way more comfortable, and so that kind of shows... Which like I am in favor of. when you're an underdog in the game, taking some risks with the comp, taking them to a different map, like trying new stuff. So I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I mean, so. what do you have to lose, right? I mean, you know, worst case... The game. You, the game. You lose, yep. but I mean, if you're going into it as the underdog already as it is, and you're going up against the Leviathan team that a lot of people weren't giving you the time of day against. But also, I think we... Obviously, we're reacting to game one. I think all of our opinions was Lev is going to be the stronger team, but C9 have been saying they're owning everyone uh, in scrim, so they're not coming look, in week. Look at the agent select. Leviathan is stealing the loud comp going for I was but wondering who was going to do it. Well, but this is the weird thing, though. It's the loud comp, but there's no Viper. And I think that Viper really enables the no dive comp, right? The, the double flash as well, because you can chop the map into much smaller segments. You can fight through your walls much easier. The Cypher does not operate in nearly the same way. I, what, the, what the Cypher does add is it lets you strong side really heavily towards that double initiator and have the Cypher to hold down on the other also activate a couple more lurks. But you're absolutely right. That Viper, I think, makes it a lot harder to mid-round on the attack. Ospos is going to fry on Phoenix. I'm just saying, I ain't never seen this before, and he is going to fry. Yeah, we haven't even really covered <laughs> that yet. He just dropped a 30 bomb. And he... When's yeah. the last time you voted an Asian besides Jenna right now? <laughs> well, he's like, this is crazy. We're going to learn today, Mimi. Let's see what ends up happening and get ready for map number two. We're going to send it back over to your casters, the tag team stylings of Vansili and Rivington. Thank you again, GB, and our friends at the desk. Indeed, I kind of agree with Bola. I think Ospos is just going to fry on Phoenix. And maybe he one is. of those days, like, remember when they when they won that map where he's like on, on Icebox, like, I'm just going to play Reyna today. Maybe today yeah. you just woke up and said, Mom, I'm just going to play some Phoenix today and see how that's going to pan out. And I think it's going to pan out quite great. We'll have to see. I mean, if it happens any any way, like the last game went, Oxy fuels fire, Ospos <laughs> goes off. I mean, this could just be an absolute explosion here for the Phoenix, for Leviathan. Great to come puns. I love as them. strong. Hey, we got to get a few in there throughout <laughs> the season. Okay? Okay?
giant radionite hole blown through here as both worlds of Omega and Alpha. But they do bring a good uh, a good note on the desk here. There's no Viper coming out from this composition that either surprises from Leviathan. So me. they'll try to see now as they start on the attack for Leviathan is there's, if there's going to be a little bit more of a death fall, if Texas is just going to be watching flanks or if it's going to be King just trying to use the lurks here. But we'll look at the lurks later. We have first contact at middle from Tiles. And the first one to answer is once again Leviathan and Oxy Falls at the beginning, watching it from the market. First kill going to Mazzino. We'll see how this breach utility comes through. So effective from different positions on Sunset and the ways that you can actually get your team into a site. Looks like they're all going to hunker down and get to this elbow area, though, as mid is being controlled very hard. None of the Cypher utils up, so Lev has to go oh, forward oh, or oh, full oh. reclear behind themselves. This is going to be a weird pinch the if they're not ready. Oh, they're ready now. Yep, <laughs> especially after that jiggle from Calm. That's three coming back. A high flash, a paranoia doesn't hit Calm. So he actually has a perfect angle here. One versus one to jump across. Zephyr wins that fight. Meanwhile, though, the plant did go down for Leviathan inside eight. A flash towards the left corner. Aspas going for the curveball. Seeing three, connecting on to a bit of damage. And Mazzino's trying to answer back. But the flash does not blind the opponents as they fall back. The heal out on the defensive side for C9 as we have players full HP trying to retake. Just pushing forward. Lev get a few quick kills. Vanity to peak. And Lev was winning the whole time. Head to head against Vanity. Yeah. As Mazzino still holds that site down. Traded out by Rooney. A tap on that spike and a tap of a stick. Remaining. And that corner towards Dice has never been cleared. King gets the easy pick. Vanity trying to make some noise just to bait him out. Oh, and it's King to jump instead. On to Vanity as Leviathan get another pistol on their side. Really nicely done. Texas push up towards Pawn Shop. Caught Moose running backwards. He was jumping into spawn to reposition and get back in. They did not expect to lose the sight anchor in that situation. And then here, good hold on sight. They're looking towards spawn for that reaggress, and it actually comes from inside the sight. Nicely done for Leviathan grabbing pistol round. Two Bulldogs to come out. Spectres and the ghosts. So a bit of a mid-round push. C9 trying to get moving right away on that first round as they stack four towards A here with a cam and B main. I wonder if Aspas goes for all the orb focus. Mazzino's got a few on the, ki on the kills, but we see Oxy grabbing him up on one side, and I figure Phoenix would be the one to do it on the other. Perfectly done here for C9. At least you're on an eco and you're trying to get that ult up, rather, the showstopper ACP onto Oxy. Even when you're Come looking at the out. roster for C904 for this map, it kind of makes sense the roles that they're currently playing, all very strong in that specific role. Yeah. So there is a chance. We haven't seen too much of C9 since really the, I guess, the offseason at this point. They tried some Yoru and stuff like that on this map. But this is a, a fairly confident a lineup that he could have here for Cloud9 on this sunset map. And that said, though, a contact text gets spotted here, but Oxy is just trying to bait out some shots, trying to see if there's more than one person out of that. I must and after that moment. camera that gets broken, you're starting to see the smoke come out immediately towards the B yeah. side to hold that push. Really facilitating that text work, but you still have the initiators ready to hit B. All the util floods in. They should be getting a front set, uh, site plant here. C9 had a perfect read after that one. Great one delay. On side, four players through. Paranoid oh. delays a bit with a snake bite. There's finally a trade coming out from Cloud9. Two of them fall, though, on the defensive side. As Zeppa is trying to find a timing, looks into the wrong corner. Calm picks up the easy kill. This will be GG for the round. Oxy low HP at 13. Underhand throw. And doesn't want to give an orb away to his opponents. I'll take that any day. Smart and, play. And, like, if somebody's coming up, chip armor, trying to do a little best of both worlds. But going down in the end, you can only do so much in there and you don't want to give the all door. Min maxing his demise. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. At every point in time that you can. All right, Leviathan. Interesting to see. We saw Mazzino and Tex on the one side. They put the fault line into the lurk to try and sell that lurk that much more. So it's not just Tex on his own throwing cams, trying to bait somebody out. They're Come actually putting quite a unknown. bit into these fakes so far, right even on that low, low buy for C9. But now to the bonus. I expect to see those full protocols coming out on each one. They do not let that B main control go. You see that Lev last round actually had to clear the spot behind them and B main right behind that wall. And Aspas will start to focus the orb. That was a question for us. How often will they get that run it back? Breaking wall. Just getting C9 a little antsy here as it's still pretty much a default for Leviathan. Yeah, and takes on the... Other side of the map, once again, was trying to contain the A side as Oxy's the one trying to push forward with Zeppa. 
themselves trying to control space on the A side, try to control orb if they can. <laughs> uh, he was ready to pounce. That dog was ready to pounce there, but Zeppa just staring through the eyes of that dog, the lurk here from Tex. But there's that rotate across, nice fault line out from Tiles, and Oxy managed to escape. A really nice escape, expecting that too. It, it kind of thwarts the fact that they want to play off the fault line. Oxy can still get the info, and now they play safe. But is it enough? Can the team rotate quick enough? Leviathan paused for a moment to get the util out, and it might be just enough time for Cloud9. Yeah. That was a one-way being thrown there towards left. that left side, a smoke in the end when they got the flash contact and elbow. But this gives an opportunity for Leviathan to just flood. Look at all that util. Uh-oh. Flashes galore in all angles as Kong gets first blood onto Rooney. Another flash coming through. Oxy's fully blinded, trying to stay alive. Nice little headshot though onto Mazzino as the spike falls. There's 13 seconds left for the clock. A second kill coming through. Eight shells on the ground as the hope came out from Bob. Boss. A three versus one, six seconds left, trying to stay alive as he gets that pick, but there will not be enough time running through the protocols, boost and vanity, fall back to save the weapons, and also win the round on time here for Cloud9. Oxy doing the dance inside sight. I gotta see it again. What was that separation between Lev out the smoke? No was somebody ran spawn, and then Oxy had time to just dance around the box, get back in position, and get the safety here. The dog just grilling. <laughs> Well, you saw that util that came out, though, towards that A site, right? They had the paranoia and an aftershock. So for them, for Leviathan, they thought that it was fully cleared. True, true. And Oxy, all he did was dance around the left side. He had What's no pressure on the left side because brother? of these one ways that were being thrown by Vanity in. Wow. That was Look probably up. the perfect Look thing to allow Oxy to get these kills in. Super that kid keeps smiling. Great defense. B main control instantly again for Leviathan. And that's one thing here that C9 will have to start identifying, but we'll hold that thought for a bit. There's an early curveball, and now the orb's being taken by Mazzino. Yeah. So they are trying to cycle objectives with this orb, but that's the name of the game right now for Leviathan. C9, they have to try to fight, but they're fighting mid instead. Pushing oh. out very yeah. aggressively. Yeah, they'll get one, one for one for that, so we'll take it. Moving back around. So they know Lev is playing the orb game. That's something that Rooney can hear exactly. inside B. It's something that's gonna happen. You see Rooney throwing the Viper or the snake bite out every so often, just trying to do a bit of damage, get some armor off and chip him away. And this mid to market play could be huge. Only good for that one kill, unfortunately, though, as they had the players to at least try to set up some sort of crossfire for Cloud9. Advantage still for Leviathan as the hot hand gets thrown at the staircase. Zeppa runs through for a bit. Here's the spike going down. And he's hoping to get Spike one. Planted. The play is well up. Finally gets the pick there on to Aspas. But doesn't know that there is this player right here that lurked through. Zeppa tried to clear it. There's no util left to try to get information for Cloud9. So it has to come down to the swings and the trades. And it continues Ooh. to be perfect here for Leviathan. They were thinking it was cut close to the corner. With the, the time that you saw the swing off that paranoia, they were expecting somebody to be tight left, not just standing right in the middle yeah. there with another off angle. So nicely played. Good uh, defense on the site there by Lev to throw off the angles of the crosshair for C9. And this, this mid fight, super aggressive. You see C9, like you said, wanting to get their hands dirty right away, wanting to find out what Lev is doing. Yeah because we talked about maybe trying to control B main, but at this point, if they want to fight back towards middle, they'll give the orbs any time they want. Getting control of mid will not allow any lurkers to happen on a split towards B. And maybe potentially with the comp that they have, they could have a better retake here towards the B site in the end. Now looking for a timing to contest towards the B site with a tap on an orb, but there's nobody from Leviathan there. Kong with the spray as soon as the wall came up, gets contact on one. Here comes the swing for the rest, and he'll get two at least, and it's going to be King's turn. He's going to save the weapon. Exactly. And make sure they don't get it. There's the step he needs. Yeah. That's too obvious at this point. <laughs> Easy stop there. Slow play towards A. Lev continue to set up this default, too, where you see King is mid. The fault line's ready from Tiles from Mazzino. This plant will actually give Mazzino ult, so they can start to think about future rounds on this. And all they have to do is hold off Cloud9. C9 here, pick up a few of these weapons that may have fallen. You even see Oxy's like, is they still protecting this? <laughs> not, not just yet. So Showstopper and Seekers for next round too. So C9 aren't too far back here from being able right to there. even up this game with the power they're bringing into the next few rounds. Yeah, and they don't mind playing a little bit more forward at this point as well. So yeah. that Oxy could actually help out to maybe go for any type of trades if Zeppa gets contact now towards A. They're not really trying to play the retake because again, you don't want to give these orbs away to Aspas. He's already one away from 
to run it back yeah. as he's moving forward with the rest of his teams, trying to find these players that are trying to die to spike potentially. <laughs> I was thinking, does Aspas go hunting? But it looks like Mazino has to, or Mazino or Tex have to buy for somebody next round. So I'm calm that is. So spike goes off, kills go down. We expect to see Zeppa go in there. And Oxy's gonna hold that ultimate, hold the weapon for next round. Four to one now. So Levs like to get mid control. Take a little bit of that. Two rounds ago, we saw C9 trying to stick their foot in that door. It didn't work too well. They did get the trade off, but they're losing one. So if they can just get control of that mid and then hold it, maybe from market or at least top mid, I think they, they stop a lot of what Leviathan wants. Maybe even Tiles control would mix up a lot of how they start their strategy. And towards A again to start, though, with a lurk from King. Insta util. Off a of flash combo just to see if there's aggression out of yeah. Cloud9 towards the elbow, but there's nobody. Yet, Leviathan are still trying to group together to support towards middle. Oxy set up really for a camera showstopper, but it gets instantly broken, this camera. So he might not be able to set this early trap play. Seems like it's being red, though. Tex is ready. Yeah. Trying to find a dog too, and as they only see the lurk coming out from Tex, they don't think that there's more players behind, so C9 will opt to save their showstopper for now. Yeah, I think C9's done a great job of kind of reading overall how Lev starts to rounds. We saw the fault line from Mizino almost go straight up pawn shop towards the dumpster this time. That's been the blast pack escape for Oxy. So instead of from tiles, they went to change it up towards pawn. Now they don't need to, it becomes a contact play. But C9. Giving Lev a hard time on these starting setups now. Yeah. Cage they walled up, double swung, saw nobody, so you pop the ult right away. You get information and it's towards the A side. Oh, Showstopper boy. gets two, but one of them was to run it back, so Aspa stays alive. Seconds left. And as we rotate back towards the B side, it's open, and King is the one moving forward. And trying to find a time against Vanity, trying to rotate back, but Vanity instead is just trying to hold the main key choke points to allow his teammates to rotate over with 16 seconds left on the clock. And as he peaks a little bit too much, yeah. though. It's going to give a chance for the plant to come through. They didn't realize how far Leviathan left. actually got into B. They were ready and waiting. So you, it, it tells Wait, you. Nate's time. Stick it right Wait, now. Oxy's oh. pushing forward. The Luna gets to pick as well. C9 found the timing with the util to get these kills. Oh, what a stop. What a nade. Oxy still has that. That late into the round. Changing from that short, or uh, from the pawn shop play to mid. Oxy never really saw too much play with who they were playing. I think it was Zeppo maybe up there too. And yeah, this shot. Beautifully done by Rooney there. Swaying towards the enemy. You, you saw it. They still had the snake bite available. That's the crazy. attempt to try to get the plant in that corner first. Then the paint shells because of that showstopper. That was very nice thinking on the toes here for Cloud9. That was the tempo increase from what we've seen on the C9 retakes, especially after losing Vanity there. Ultimate comes right away from Com. And that's all the util down on this B site. And that force is now Rooney to play an off angle at the entrance of the B site. And there's that lurk on market. B site now open. And this time they'll get the plant. But that's the thing you mentioned, right? The, the change of tempo that you saw in the attack for, or sorry, for the retake mm -hmm. for C9. That's the thing that Imi was talking about during that halftime interview that during these scrims, they. They're playing that way, so they want to see that a little bit more now applied in the game. Yeah. So there's a there's a taste of it. But now you want to make sure here that it continues on as the round and the rounds in the map continues here on Sunset. So just to dwindle down of this timer, Leviathan doing a great job. I was going to say last round, as we saw, taking late B, but having A pressure of keeping this default uh, in a way that's causing Cloud9 to basically guess everything, where they might peak, what the timing might be, and what the state of the game is. As they find these kills towards elbow, maybe? Yeah, there's a flash. He's Ooh. down Zeppa. Stuck in the elbow. <laughs> Stays Stay alive. Up. All right. Rooney might, I mean, you can't really alt right away towards A. They just encroach on that. Can you alt towards B to start off? It's, it's kind of hard to get that in a good position unless you're just denying something as C9 call the timeout here. So it is going to be a bit of a buy, lower buy for C9 as they come out of this.
And they're going to have to come out with something as this looks like it could be a runaway with the amount of money that Leviathan has with the amount of ults that are going to come up. So what do they do? The mid pressure has actually gotten Cloud9 a favorable trade. And each time they do it, Tile's control has been Leviathan's all the time. So something in mid may be the answer to at least separate the, the power that Leviathan feels like they have in this default setup. And it's tough. You're mentioning here Rooney's ult. Can he use it early somewhere? I mean, right. towards that B side, it's going to be a tough one. They because... just come around market if you use it main. Exactly. Otherwise, the same, you know, vice And you have to so. make sure that it reaches far enough to even deny the orb. But they have such good util on the other hand, uh, other end, rather, for Leviathan to just counter that right away. So maybe trying to get that pit and temple towards the middle would be potentially the play if they want to up the temple that Imi wants right now out of C9. All right. Let us see. Towards A, at least to start where Rooney's position is. For Leviathan, it's like a nice little slow default. Spikes down towards the spawn. Oh, one nice. watching the, the flanks, watching the pushes. It's going to be text towards this A side. Spikes grabbed. Looks like they may play a little bit of a fake if you're going to put the Phoenix over there or not. Okay, he goes Tiles. So like Phoenix and the Cypher may try to sell something towards A. But no, Tiles control again is Tex is met with that one way. We'll see what Aspas can control. So they actually just go for control over the orb of A. Very nicely done. I mean, it's it's a set. But now if they go through mid around to A, this could make things sketchy here for Cloud9's defense. Vanity was trying to play on the top of news. Might call it 10 spot from now on. But couldn't get that kill on the top of mid. Forced to fall back in. Not that was the yet. other important anchor. Peace on the top of middle. Yeah. Zeppa got smoked out, was trying to find information, and then he got picked in the end. So an early advantage for Leviathan. And actually, it dwindles down the defense that you currently have here from C9, because one has to be planted towards the A side. So yep. he has a lot of room for Leviathan to work middle and anywhere they want from there. They have such good protocols out of this. Normally, you could almost say to yourself, all right, let them have mid. What are they going to do from there? But the, how explosive they become off of Mazino's utility. Hasbos running forward. It seems almost unstoppable. Oof. They find Calm, though, to start it off. With the first small mistake out from Leviathan to start, jump peeking with the recon dart, but it gives information for Leviathan left. to know how many players are towards B. Beautiful paranoia. An assist to allow Oxy to get the kill onto Hasbos. Vanity playing the off angle right in that tight cubby. They and did. Ends up being a beautiful crossfire in the end. Let them have mid. C9 back up. They make sure they just don't come through the omen smoke at the top of stairs in mid. And Rooney just has to call if he hears anything. Great play to hunker down on that B site to make sure Leviathan could not get the market play. Now what can they do that they don't have an alt that kind of directs where we're seeing them go? That is the question. Yeah. Cloud9 enemy remaining. still looking at a few ultimates, but those are going to be in the play, in the protocol with Omen, with Vanity yeah. on his ult and Moose. And you saw with those picks, though, right? They didn't really take too much control of top Go middle here for Leviathan. No. And the game plan from them so far in these nine rounds is, or eight rounds, rather, that we just saw, they haven't really been pushing up middle to pinch from behind. It's just really Toss default 3-2 from this B site, or just plowing towards the elbow towards A. Ooh. This is slowly being read by C9 as they have three players here to get ready for that push. They look angry. Yeah. It looks like they want to swing this. The first bit of noise. They hold it for a moment. That Noia in Vanity's hands is almost the light on the fuse. And they're going to back off just for now. They have control right of the here. orb, though, and they've pushed up, which is really good for A's knowledge of what's going to happen. Especially after the Aldron saw Oxy here, that's going to tempo up the push from Leviathan towards his A side. But Moose has trap kills all across the board here. If he gets smoked out towards spawn, you can just hopefully get a tag or some kills. Nice little flash at the same time. If you're going to try to run through, you could get tripped over. As Leviathan is looking to exit or enter towards the A side. Nice little win by Tex. Even a second one thrown out the hat, and that's the remaining three players potentially here having no choice but to save. Yeah. Especially now that Aspas is pushing forward with the run it back, keeping them at bay. And look at Kam already lurking out towards the market, pitching from behind. Of course he is. The perfect lurk too. Nobody, he's just getting the back of every player. Hello. Just holds it out the spray, forcing him towards Kam. Unfortunately, can get a second one, but you definitely do see the rest of Leviathan hunting down C9 towards the market now. Thankfully. Rooney's still alive, so he could put the wall up. Yeah. Decay onto Tex, gets the pick. We might do Iron Man at this point.
King's close by, but you definitely see the last players, they don't have too much money to work with here, so the last three will not hunt Thompson down anymore. But at the end of the day, yeah. the round is still in favor of Leviathan. We look at that round, and I think it, it becomes a round where C9 is happy to allow mid open, and they play control over a site here. They give up too much space and it bites them. Like right? Tex walks right into the site. It's all contact play, and Leviathan just take the shots that they need. So a little too much space being given in one round. They control it good and find the middle ground, lock down Leviathan, and don't give them as much. Again, Tiles has just been home ground for Lev. Once they get mid, they listen to the map. They start to read it. See if they try to go for that once again here as we're back to a bit of the early round. Oh, and that's a miss. So close to the hand there of Aspas. Yeah. And it was off a of camera to bait it out, but Elise that's able to rotate need. back towards the market. That's Tiles down. So you talked about this Tiles control. They found it, but somebody here. still made it through. Here. It's King just waiting to see if he could catch rotates and it's shot deep so that he could actually swing through. Perfect timing to come across head to head against another smoker, and that's Vanity to fall. Flash on the front of the A side, beautifully Ooh, done by Cloud9, just to answer right back, and that spike now in their control. Yeah, Flank from behind, a one for one. Calm is now alone. An opportunity to win a 1v1 right here, and he'll get it against Rooney. Spike. spike now picked up. Recon dart available. He's just going to use all the time in his favor to add a little bit more. Wasting out or forcing out. The neural theft. The ping across, the spike plant down, the sprays attempt, the off angle position now by Com. The double swing in the end, but it's C9 winning it. Now we're making it a closer game finally for Cloud9. Yeah, good control there. Rooney with some pivotal kills over towards that A area of Altor. And the rest of the team playing together to get it back. They being able to pick apart Leviathan in mid is definitely what C9 can focus right now. Yeah, you want to play defense. The name of the game is they're forced to walk into the site, play hard angles. But I feel like if Led's going to give you this many fights in mid, there's a way to get that trade. There's a way to play it. So they're going to go down. And there was Oxy's operator. They don't have it again. It's going to be in Vanity's hands now as they start to switch it up. So not even the positioning, but the player. We'll see how they one way here, Vanity, and then I think he'll go towards mid as they try to shut down on this pressure. Lev can create from that part of the map. Cool. So they call the wall down, and there you go. So Beautifully done. Little revenge there, huh, Vance? King yeah. goes down from the push last round to Vanity's hands now. They're going to be able to re-grab a gun, get that stinger out of their hands, but still have mid control. Something they prioritize. And right now, since they lost a smoker for Leviathan, and you're playing single controller, you're going to have to start using your Cypher and Phoenix together, potentially to block vision Justice as you're moving through. Down. So you're eliminating the fact that you could lurk around. But as I say that, it's Kong trying to sell a fake towards this A site with the Justice Aldrone as Rooney's waiting. The walk contact play back into market. It's traded out. Showstopper out. And it gets swatted out Ooh. by Ospos. There is that blaze wall to look back towards the spawn. Big flash putting Moose away. Zeppa running through. There is that cage. And he's burning down from the hot hand. Second flash blinding Moose once again. And as they're playing back and forth with utility for C9, they can't capitalize on a kill. They're just huh. trying to get out of MOBA. Exactly. And it gives enough chance here, enough time for Khan to meet up with his two teammates to try to isolate this B site. Nice shot by Zeppa. Spike oh. down B. As now the paranoia comes through, now commanded towards this B site. It's up to Moose to wait. 18 seconds left with the first tap. Calm playing the off angle, off moving forward with a jump spot. Oh, could connect the shots, unfortunately, all around the silhouette of Zeppa. Left. That was crazy. And you definitely do see once again with time, no matter oh, what, oh. it was going to be C9's round. And they're one round away of tying up the game. And this, this is definitely a different switch. story than that first map on Icebox. Yes, it is. C9. Even the trades we saw a few rounds ago, I think it was Rooney and Zeppa who had pushed up towards A or awesome shot by Vanity. The swings they were doing off each other looked much more coordinated, just tethered to each other, able to anchor the shots. They were missing a lot of that in the first game here. It looks like they have ironed a bit of that out. Operator still here, going to be in the mix for the final round of the first half on Sunset. And to note as well, I mean, we're in the first half, but Leviathan's first play on Sunset as well. So we're seeing their first go with Aspas here on Phoenix, the rest of the squad. 
as they formulate their attack side. Still tiles control. They go back to this default. Play across. With, without even anybody ready, it seems like they're just kind of oh, protocol to down. make them think twice. Rooney with three. Easily done. You saw on the other end, they were trying to control middle. And then at least trying to move up towards the A side with a fault line. Instead, it's a hundred sphere to try to create space for Tex. Crossing over gets dropped. Oh. Spike down As this is a great a. chance for C9 to get a flawless. Bring that confidence and carry it over towards that second half. Khan is going to use, uh, once again, all the time in the world to make C9 antsy and hopefully punish some mistakes. But C9, you definitely see it. A pit on that spike, and they're just going to hold it. <laughs> they're like, 38 seconds. What do you got? And it's going to be the off from Vanity. They bring it up to a 6-6 first half. And it was interesting. Oxy with the Switching off, Vanity sides. with the off. Switching around how to figure out where Lev was going and understanding that mid was a lot of that starting priority. Uh, a lot of C9's focus in the beginning was for that B main control. They expected Osbos to want to hover orb and just eat it up and alt after alt. But that wasn't the play and it took a little bit for C9 to figure it out. But they did and Rooney back in action is feeling it. Yeah, all they had to do there is continue <laughs> their own protocols and their own game to hold that. And they were able to make this to a 6-6. But at least until we start the second half, let's toss it down to Smix and the belated birthday man, Papacom. Thank you very much, Ben Tilly. Papacom, it is always such a pleasure to be able to speak with you. Uh, I know the last time I had a chance to, to have a chat, it was very clear you were very, very nervous. Uh, it was it, You were absorbing all of the energy of what was coming off of the stage. Now that you've done this you know, many times, you've seen your son on stage lift a trophy, become a world champion. Has it gotten a little bit easier? I think so. Him winning the world champion, uh, him being a world champion, it's kind of like, you know, he's accomplished at the top level. So anything after this is gravy. What was that moment like for you? Because obviously for the EG fans and, and all the personal fans of Com, it was amazing to witness, but I, I have to imagine it's different as father to see your son go on this journey from start to scratch. Uh, it was surreal. I mean, the, the arena was surreal. The crowd was surreal. The Cinderella story was surreal. I mean, it's been an amazing experience. Indeed, and now obviously he's on a new team. Uh, talk to us, does he does he like to d deliberate some of these decisions that he makes or does he talk to you afterwards? What is that relationship like? Yeah, he always comes to me for strats. No, I mean, <laughs> he's um, he's accomplished so much. He's bringing so much intangibles to a team. He did it in a crew, he did it in EG. Now I'm hoping he, do it, he does it with Leviathan. Uh, he's both uh, someone that brings a team together as well as inject a lot of good ideas. So he builds a team up. Amazing. Thank you so much, Papacom, as always, for taking the time. We'll see how this map goes as we throw it back to our casters, Vansilli and Rivington. Thank you so much, Smix. And indeed, I mean, I'd, I'd probably take some advice here from Papacom. He's Absolutely. tearing up the Team Deathmatch servers all the time, and I see him tweet about it. And you know what? Another <laughs> thing, I, I wish I'd looked as good for uh, 25 years old there. Uh, happy belated birthday there, Papacom. <laughs> That's it, 6-6. Six, six. C9 able to fight back now in Leviathan, as we saw that they were working a little bit towards this side and went towards a different game of mid, and C9 was able to read that quite well. It's now time for Leviathan to play the defense. They start things off with some information gathering. We saw the Skybird being thrown early by Zeppa that finds no contact towards middle. And C9's looking to get the punish into market. A little bit of love taps there onto Mazino, forced to fall back now at the staircase, and instantly two players going to meet up with him. <laughs> you just see him creep into market here all slyly, ready for the protocol they're setting up for a market play. They may get backstabbed here if anybody or if everybody starts to run through. Cypher Util is at A, and I think that's been slowly identified here. Good yeah. lurk coming in from Moose. They may actually revert on this if he gets far enough up. Right now, C9 is just waiting for the smoke to dissipate, right? They yep. pinged out towards the left side of the orb. They pinged out towards the map. They want to make sure that they clear all of that. But all of this time wasted to clear this area. You see the position from Leviathan already ready to set up these crossfire fault lines to even delay them. Bye bye. But this is it. This is the big one right here. Moose walking in. And he's going to be able to escape at least a trap coming through head to head now against Tex. 
He knows Texas is back, left. but he doesn't know where the trips are. Doesn't want to get himself caught. Oh, no. Moose takes it upon himself to go in. It's, it's exactly what you want to see from a new player. Feeling confident to make it happen. The plant's going to go down, and all this power from that pawn shop side could come through from yep. C9 on this post plant. Hot hands, paranoia, shock darts doing a lot of damage here on to C9, but Oxy still gets a pick. Another flash out through the smoke. Oxy gets a second one. King shells out. Fennity holding the sight as players of Leviathan are falling down. One more left to go. It becomes a flawless for Cloud9 in the pistol. Awesome pistol round. The mid play, they find out where the breach is. They actually go towards the Cypher util in the end, but know that dealing with that Cypher, dealing what might be set up after they start to go towards market, really nicely pull the Vieton over. And then this lurk from Moose, as big as he is, can squeak into these tight spots, figure out where C9 need to go partially through the round. Huge stuff. And then Oxy, just classic Oxy, if you will. Nice nade to come out as well. We're seeing it too from the composition and firsthand that there is a lot of util flood for Leviathan towards the east side. A lot of it missed at that point. So C9 were in great positions to avoid the radius of the damage that was implemented against them. And off this round, C9 staying as a group. Not even controlling the orb. It just want a death ball into the A site. Yeah. They know what's clear. They have to stay together. I mean, you drop one a, a vandal, uh, a vandal or a phantom, you gotta pick it up right away. And be crazy if you have both and call that a vandal. <laughs> a vandal. I mean, that's what they have. It's a vandal buy. Second round. All right. <laughs> they shouldn't take or suffer too much damage, even through the one way. A quick shot for Moose to collect one for himself. And this is going to be a spike death for Leviathan if they can help it. It's going to be hunting. Exactly. Know, Oxy going forward, says, with this ghost, I will push. And then I will also fall, but at least get an orb for my troubles, exactly. right? <laughs> Still becomes a round for Cloud9. Clean. It's exactly how they got to start off the second half. They actually got pistol um, to start off Icebox, too, on second half. So yep. that has been coming in well for them. Still have a bit of that eco prowess that we saw before with the Sheriffs. So that, that C9 is still in there. Well, it seems like they're starting to scratch the surface to bring a little bit of it back out here. Vanity and Rooney able to get the calls that are really working against Leviathan's early rounds. But is it going to work for the bonus? That's the question. The rotations won't come as quick, and Leviathan is going to anchor these sites a little harder. We will see Mazzino living in that market area for quite some time to be able to affect both sides of the map. And we'll see how much C9 favors or just conditions towards A in these next few rounds. No mid control right now for the team. They, uh, those pings look like it's Ascendant. Satchel out as well. Flash on the other end, getting the timing towards the one way of Raider Knight and a day. Oh, try to step on the top. King couldn't capitalize on the kill. Ox is actually still quite he uh, healthy. Yeah. As they get the paint shells to push him back, and that will allow C9 to get the plant. Heal comes in from Zeppa. They're back to topped off, just no armor from that chip. The 5v5 retake here to happen. But Zeppa used a lot of that timing of the dog only to spot that one player, so he doesn't really know how many players will be flooding out towards the A link. But you can definitely see it from Leviathan. A fault line rated across the map. The Aladron towards the front. Cages and smokes to try to slow them down. Aftershock, Zeppa avoids it, stays inside the, the uh, Viper Orb. As King is now going, he finally move inside the site, gets that first headshot onto Zeppa. Beautiful flash being done. That's the second one to fall for C9 on the pulse plant. But there is utility on that spike to delay that defuse out of Leviathan. And all that time that it took for Leviathan to attempt to take the A site. Wow. It's Icebox all over again with the pulse plant utility. <laughs> the omens go down to the explosion. Good gun saves, though, for C9. Good damage from Good Leviathan. Bonus. Good bonus, right. Getting a lot of that in. All right. Live. As we watch here, this replay, the, having the, sorry, the Phoenix and the Breach to come in with so many flashes, but it just didn't clear enough ground. Only that early part of the site and C9 were still ready to defend a lot from the A main alt orb position. Doing a, an interesting job of not really trying to anchor too much in the site, leaving a few, but really hovering back around Rooney and back around where the flank would come from and being able to dump utility in that way. So Lev calls a timeout. Going to get themselves situated here to see how next round may be able to play out. Alt orbs not really in their favor as they're quite a few points away still. So C9 can really start to run away with a few rounds and make this hurt.
especially if you're able to avoid the utilities that's being thrown for the attempt of the retake towards A every single time. And also now realizing that C9 has Pulse Clan util lineups yeah. out from that Viper towards elbow, towards a ramp. So the control right now, will it be trying to work towards that middle? Will we want to try to get flankers now from Leviathan just to make yeah. sure here that C9 can't set up outside of the uh, outside of the A site? And for the, those rounds, last round, you know, they call upon Oxy. Blast forward by himself towards Dumpster, pushing forward through the one way. Doesn't get hit because King doesn't expect that on, on that step up already. And they start to flood the site. Little ways that C9 is trying to up the tempo to get through the defenses of Leviathan here. Yeah. So back to a default setup, more so that Cypher at B for Leviathan, a little bit of B main control, and now Breach over towards A. Yeah, they went for the Recon Dark now from the top mid, just to get information, fault line, potentially, if there was more pressure coming up from C9 at the ramp, and then King to come out with the Sheriff, but instead, King will get posted, and will use his body to get information. This rifle that was saved, though, by Calm in that previous round, you saw that he still has a hundred, a thousand credits, rather, and didn't want to buy an Alm drone, so they don't really have too much util to find the mid-round information. It's going to have to come down to really try to play more passively, trying to find some sort of punishment here on the over-aggression of C9. And there is that first contact, and King's already falling back. Going to have a pre pretty easy time taking this. Over on the defensive side, you see Tex and Ospos waiting for a cam peak. They just take control of B main as the spike's going down. So a lot of time for Cloud9 to set up here once they take down King. As they take down King, Mazzino at least yeah, was Mazzino. able to get one, but so far you definitely saw trying to do a hero play towards the dice. Planted. It wasn't enough defensive plays and this defensive players to help Leviathan from the dumpster, from the A-Link. Now it would be a similar story. Make things expensive with the Phantom. Dying to the spike. Trying to find a timing here is Calm swinging out. Then Zeppa punishes him. They're looking good here for a C9 to close up another round. So Tex moves forward for a one kill. Trying to salvage something. Maybe the Phantom, maybe some more kills. Aspash just waiting patiently for the first contact. But could not get a kill in the end. And that's C9 at 10. Cloud9 are running just this D, not default towards A, but the same strat towards A. Everybody ready to push in. Rooney, Rooney watches the back a bit. They feel comfortable. Why change it if it's working? And they, they head into sight, almost like it's unstoppable for Lev right now with the numbers they're putting there. Let's see this replay one more time. And, and just a simple hold. This obviously a lower buy for Lev, so it, yeah. it does become a very comfortable round for Cloud9 to start getting these swings in once they have the sight. But yeah, a lot of focus towards A here for C9. Not a lot of mid control, not a lot of rear control on their flank. Spike They're just going mid. forward and it seems to work. This is going to be a different look though. They go towards mid pretty hard as they just lose vanity. Exactly. Kamala did was sprayed down towards the smoke and contacted for a kill wall bang. Al Drone coming up and we're trying to answer back with their own wall bangs. But Oxy couldn't get it. Al Drone still hasn't been broken. So that forces players to push into the market. He gets two pings out of the Owl Drone. Tex with the off angle. Flash comes out. Cage comes up. That saves actually Zep at the same time. He counter flashes, but Aspa still holds the angle. And finally, C9 decides to fall back. Too many cages. Too many block views. As Aspa finally starts getting activated there. He had a very, very slow map so far. I think I saw six and something. So that's yeah. maybe another plan now for C9. Trying to avoid not only Aspas, but the Cypher Util on that B site, which, which is potentially why we're seeing C9 continuously pump towards the A site hit. Yeah, it's a lot easier to make sure you get into A. Even if you get trapped, somebody can shoot it for you. You're right. We have not seen any B play here from C9. And when we do go market, Lev has a crossfire ready for it. Yeah. And they're already watching from top mid to make sure it's pinched as well and nobody can get a flank. Leviathan putting a little stop to the bleeding there. That's big. The flash was actually thrown on top of tiles from that ent this entrance right here. So you saw a couple of players already rotate out from the A site to top mid. Shadows. And C9's just trying to find a better timing to maybe push back towards the A ramp, but a second one-way smoke just thrown here by King. We'll slow things Shadows down for a bit. Traveling. Smoking mid. Just missing it. The homo's got that. <laughs> <laughs> trying to hit the tripwire just so someone has to think about market. 
But it's an A play that's going to come through, and King falls. There you go. Contact play this time around. One crouching under, the other's around. Mm -hmm. King punish, and look at the pivot. Leviathan focusing on top mid and A site. A retake play on B. Moose trying to take control of middle right now, and he's not going to hear any of this so far because it's just a walk across. TP now towards the spawn. It's a fake now just yeah. to make sure that you're trying to keep Leviathan out towards the A side. And here comes the hit. And this is what we talked about. C9 has been going A, going A, conditioning towards that A. And just the Trailblazer and a delayed round will cause that rotation from Lev. But losing Moose in mid makes it 4v4, Vans. And they want to fight back towards the middle. Calm just got caught. So they have to try to push a little bit more. There is that nice pick by Rooney. A tap on that spike, maybe. But now here comes a showstopper out, denied by Mazzino. But instantly killed by Vanity. Aspas trying to move back out. Isolating, trying to isolate one of these last three players of C9. <laughs> there it is. At some point, it felt like it was almost doable there because East transfer was clean onto the second one, but at least C9 won that duel. And it's their turn to be two rounds away of closing out Sunset. It does get scary in those moments. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the amount of times we've seen Oxy get shot out of his ult this series, that hurts too. That is also very true, yes. Showstopper comes up and it's gone down twice, I believe, almost in a row now. Yeah. Vanity starting to clap back with some of these shots. Feeling good. We'll see. 11 to 7. One point off that game point. Leviathan goes for the buy. They're down in money here. If C9 can hit this, they go for the throw. Oh, so much noise. Curveball. Two kills. Make that three. And that's one thing you learn real quick. They've done a lot of these setups at the beginning of the round from Aspas and Tex, and this is the first time that C9 tries to just temple really quickly towards B main, and they were greeted by a huge surprise. It's late now in round number 19 of the second map, giving a chance here for Leviathan early. Try to bring the game back. We finally see what that Aspas and Tex hold at B looks like. Cam sees them, they throw down a gate, they get out of flash My and just start lacing through with the Phantom Sprays, and specifically the Phantom Sprays, so they can't be traded back as easy. Mm -hmm. Here we go towards A, dogged out, and Rooney oh, almost got Util caught, but he fires back. That's crazy that he re-swings the blood of <laughs> his weapon too, so Khan was not ready for that one. Runs up for the kill of the Tex, the timing off. The fault line, Rolling Thunder then answered back from the Seekers. It's a stalemate for now. Aftershock out as well, does it contact? No, he's made it towards left. the back. Now Zeppa is tucked in, 30 HP. Weapon now back out. He doesn't come towards the left, but they both get the kills. Oh my god. Map point for C9. Match point. 12 to 7. Rooney is that that's partially what I was talking about before that they're swinging together C9 so much more in sync I think that one was yeah. a, thank God we swung together but yeah. still still the teamwork is there to bring them to game point the whole ride arena just erupted <laughs> and like what the hell are you doing here Zippa? but there you go they both swing through gets that pick He's like, no, I was leaving that one for you. I, this one. you get <laughs> I got that you, one. you got me. Fine. No worries. <laughs> but fast push again, straight into B main here. And already C9 understands that, runs all the way up towards middle. Spike also there, big paranoia by King. Counter paranoia out from Vanity. Oh, towards He's not trying to pin back, but here's the thing though. The oh setup from Cypher is actually towards the A site this time around. There's that first tag, and Oxy already falls. Dog now towards the back of dice, he gets stunned. Trying to get these sprays, trying to stay alive behind the cages, giving time for Leviathan to rotate across as well. Now towards a dumpster, two kills coming up from C9 for one of Leviathan. You hear that running back from Osboss. There's that pick, a pinch now towards the connector. The hat comes out, it's a two versus one. The running back is over. He's now pinned back towards the back of the A site. And this is a chance now for C9 to close the map on a two versus one. Moose's lurks this game have secured some pivotal rounds right now for Cloud9. They're going to get the plant. It's going to be in front side. That's going to be the, a little bit tougher here if it's going to be want to be a push from Ospos and for them to uh, spam through. But Ospos wall is down. It's just going to be the fight for fight here. Can he get the transfer? C9 set up in a bit of a contact crossfire here. And he has no utility, and right now you just have to run the 
main protocols now for C9. Smoke being thrown out, even towards the staircase. Aspas is just making noise, saying, come at me, bro. Tap it onto the spike, there's that first jiggle. And see on the other end, Moose is just winning towards long B the whole time. So they're just letting Vanity win that 1v1, and he will. And C9 will be able to push this to a third map. <laughs> nah, stay up there, I got this. Vanity takes it, Moose with some big rounds. Cloud9 coming to life in game two. That was so strong from Levin. Game one, you wondered if it was going to be enough from C9 just between games to right the wrongs and come up with what they need. But Oxy came online, facilitated some of the plays by himself. A lot of good plays throughout and protocols coming onto that attack side as they hit Leviathan hard. It almost feels like what the desk was talking about here on that first map of Icebox where C9 gave so much room for Leviathan to work with, and now it's time for it's the chance for Leviathan yeah. to give C9 so much room to work with, and now they both exchange maps. And we'll see now Ruby. the conclusion on the third map on Ascent, and that will be coming after the break. Red Bull gives you wings.